So this is the difference between a cultivated American persimmon and a wild American persimmon. The wild ones are small uh, and seedy, and they're about quarter size diameter. Um, some of the more cultivated ones are larger, substantially larger. Um, the flavors spread out a little bit, but yeah, you'll find better flavor often in the wild ones uh, than in some cultivated. <laughs> There's the sun. See what's in these woods. This is American persimmon bark, the classic uh, corky, squarish looking bark. I'm not sure whether this is the 60 or 90 chromosome race since we are in Kentucky where they overlap. However, uh, we might be able to get a look at the twigs and maybe infer from those, although there is some doubt as to whether or not the phenotypes uh, are expressed in such a way. There's another obvious persimmon. A little poison ivy growing up it, but yeah, bark characteristic of persimmon. It's unforgettable once you see it. Here's another one. I see a fruit all the way up there. Most of them are bare. Let's see if I can get the fruit to come down. The thing about persimmons is you go to shake them and you really can't because the wood is so dense. Even the thin trees are very hard to get moving. More persimmon. It's really frustrating because I see the fruits up there, but I can't get them down. I found a tree that released a few, so I'm going to be picking these up for seed back home mostly. Here we go, the tree's dropping some bigger ones now. Uh, the small ones have no seed, but these bigger ones have some seeds in them, so I'll use that for rootstock. So these smaller ones have no seeds. Um, persimmon is one of many tree crops that are parthenocarpic, which means they bear fruit without the seed. Um, that is without a male present. Uh, when the males are present, you get uh, seed. So I'm back from the woods. Um, I picked a few of these persimmons. I'm unsure whether they are northern or southern race, since we're in Kentucky, which is an overlapping uh, part of their range. Um, now, a question some people ask me is, how do you tell the different races apart? Um, and this raises the question, are they different species, are they different subspecies, or are they different races slash clines? Um, and going with the, the idea that they are different races, um, we we can kind of infer that maybe these physiological differences don't really mean much because of how closely related um, the different races of persimmon are. So what I've noticed when I order uh, persimmon seedlings from different forestry services in different parts of its range, both northern and southern, I've noticed that the northern persimmons tend to have thick buds, big buds, um, a little bit of fuzz on the petiole and leaf and on the twigs itself. Um, so I associate the northern persimmon race with big buds and big chunky branches. Um, the southern race, uh, I have noticed, has smooth, small buds um, and generally makes a taller, skinnier tree in general. Now this is just a tendency that I have noticed. Um, I do not necessarily think it is an absolute indicator uh, for the northern and southern races of persimmon. I think that uh, it is variable. Um, these different phenotypes uh, in the expression of the genes could be climatic, could be uh, influenced by other uh, things. So generally speaking, I, I don't tend to uh, use these as indicators in an absolute way. I tell people that the races tend to have these characteristics, but that they may not be uh, identifiers for the different races. So that's kind of a complicated answer to what should be a simple question. You can see the size difference between a cultivar like Yates slash Jewel and the wild persimmon fruits. They're uh, notably smaller. 
There's a little pawpaw seedling just hanging out in the woods. Nestled amongst all these persimmons is a beautiful magnolia. I believe this is Magnolia tripetala, the umbrella magnolia. 